Welcome, sir. I do hope you enjoy yourself. <laughs> enjoy the evening, sir. There is still plenty of time before the grand finale. All right. If I write an article about these people here, can you help me gather information about Cordona's elite? <laughs> Do you know anything about this? Oh, d don't take it personally, sir. Uh, but I know nothing about this. The wine vapors from here will be enough to get me tipsy. I hope. My goodness, Sherlock. They made a blood fountain. No, John, it's definitely not blood, just wine. Gahor, is it a guess? <laughs> hey, Ansel, I see that look in your eyes. <laughs> you have such pretty hands. What can you do with them? I need a rest from my insatiable wife. Curtains do not guarantee privacy. And you still need a crack, despite being ethereal. Do you know what was here before Manchiosa's family bought it? That's what I like about this party. 
Bring me more dirt, Sherry. One more piece, and I can expose these base hedonists. Let me know if you need anything, sir. Honey, you feeling lonely? I'll be your friend. Manchio's had to enforce the masks after the scandal. I'll pin them down with this scoop. Thank you, Sherlock. thinks I am playing bridge here. <laughs> One of these books must open a secret passage. I know it. Well-known and recent plays to keep up to date with the current trends. Codex Orcus. Why does this occult book sound like a flower? Romantic poetry and prose. Someone's in touch with their feelings. These medieval botany and chemistry books look even more satanic than the occult ones. It's not easy to play blindfolded. Sure, you'd come. Verna, I uh, see you are not yourself. The more time you spend here in Cordona, the more I feel it my duty to bring you into our world and show you all we have to offer. And what is on offer today? Pleasure, indulgence, relief, and relaxation. You've earned some time for yourself, have you not? Those who know me would say I'm incapable of it. <laughs> Nonsense. I refuse to believe there is anyone permitted to know Sherlock Holmes. Huh. You may be right. Then free yourself from inhibition and expectation. The night is young, and so are the guests. You should try to enjoy both. It's not healthy for handsome men to spend every night alone, and certainly not in a house filled with such melancholic memories. 
I must admit, my travels have proven more taxing than expected. I'm less confident in my life and myself. A time of relaxation seems a distant dream. So can I tempt you as a physical aid to your moral consolations? There's wine, of course, and something to smoke, or perhaps an artificial paradise? Yes, something more spiritual, a potentiator to sharpen the mind. A 7% solution of, well, that'd be telling, but you must try it. My mind is my most valuable asset and a finely tuned instrument I will not risk impeding its function. My ultimate duty is to provide the world with truth, and I do that perfectly well as is. Duty? You've never cared about that before. Of course I do. Exposing a lie, revealing a fact, that is a moral responsibility. <laughs> That's not morality. Morals are what happens afterwards when truth collides with consequence. Do you ever follow up on cases you solved? Do you ever see what happened next, visit the victims, ensure justice is served in the courts? And how do you choose where to direct your attention? Are there not deserving causes to which your brilliance could be applied but isn't? You ascribe me more power than I possess. I have a narrow skill set and work within that mandate. What occurs afterward is irrelevant. With every action or inaction, you place a finger on the scales of morality. Many in the city would see you as abdicating your responsibility. I, I haven't. Not me, of course. Morality is subjective, just like truth. There is little to be gained from indulging in it, and far better things to indulge in. Now I must insist on easing any burdens I've placed upon your shoulders. Show yourself a kindness, and try this rather delectable concoction. If this solution truly does assist with thinking, then well, perhaps it would be puerile to overlook an opportunity to study it. I'll take it with me. Yes, Sherlock. Very good. And now, our evening begins in earnest. <laughs> I just remembered. I'm sorry, Sherlock. My mind's delightfully impaired. Please take this key. It opens the altar room, past the library. Pardon? Altar room? What now, Verna? Go quickly and find our Fabio. Only you can make him talk. I'll join you in a minute. Let Fabio speak for himself. Was he here this whole time? Unforced trauma may have suffered an internal hemorrhage.
This worm-like sigil has been drawn with his own blood. This crude tattoo partially covers a slave branding. This golden handle has a blood stain on it. The dagger is heavy and sharp, but lacks balance. The wound is deep. A precise strike reached the heart. The victim has clenched the fabric so firmly in his fist that it's nigh impossible to remove it. He died right here. Crime scenes always outdo my imagination. Werner, care to explain what is going on here? On nights like these, it's not unusual for some attendees to get a little... exuberant. It's part of the appeal. Unfortunately, it appears things have gotten out of hand. Yes, some are more prone to bend the rules of morality. That's murder. I doubt there's anything left to bend. Why did you not tell me immediately? We were chatting about trivial matters for some time. If I'm completely honest, Sherlock, I've consumed a rather potent cocktail of substances. My attention slips and drifts, but I'm glad I thought to call for you. You sent me a disguise. Oh dear, did I? Well, since I found the body, Mr. Manchios has agreed that you can investigate the matter. I promise my mind will behave itself going forward. All right, then pull yourself together, Werner. Mr. Manchios is the owner of the manor, yes? And the host of Cordona's most memorable parties. He promises even the ugliest guest a partner for the night. And for the ones with more unconventional tastes, Mr. Manchios provides other services. What a caring person. You cannot begin to imagine. How did you discover the body? In between guzzles of alcohol? I was set to perform in a fecundity rite with Fabio and came to inquire further. It was a staged ritual where he was to play the principle of life. And the rehearsal was unsuccessful? Ha! Huh. Who knows? I found him alone on the altar, his blood dripping to the floor. And then? Then I called Mr. Manchios. He was panicking, so I told him about you. We left the room and locked the door. Then we were... Filling time. Waiting for you was stressful. We indulged in some simple comforts. Overindulged, perhaps. Were you well acquainted with Fabio, the victim? Everyone knew Fabio, or wanted to. His beauty was the talk of the island. Too handsome to go unnoticed. He was magnetic. Fat wallets fought for the privilege of having him. He offered the pleasures of performance, and more. When you discovered the body, was the door open? No, it was locked. Oh, that reminds me. It's a minor detail, but the first time I came to speak to Fabio, I left without entering, having been unable to open the door. You didn't have the key? No, I had it. Don't look at me like that. I was mostly sober. I suspect there was a key in the other side of the door, blocking the lock. That detail may very well be major, Werner. Well done. So you returned later, only to find the lock was not blocked? Correct. After an hour had passed, 
I tried again and was able to unlock the door. That's when I discovered poor, handsome Fabio. What about the fertility ritual? There was something about Fabio being a principle of life. Fabio was supposed to portray the beauty of life's origin. Flowers, oil, not this travesty that seems straight out of the Inquisition. So this ritual is not the fertility rite. What was it meant to look like? It begins with a woman lying naked in a flower bed on the altar. She represents Gaia, the earth. As I cover her in oils, we chant for the principle. As our calls reach a climax, Fabio enters and copulates with her. After he finishes, I stab her with a dagger. That part's just pretend, of course. But the intercourse is not? I did not expect you to be such a prude. Are you a virgin? It is nothing to be ashamed of, but it would explain the colour of your cheeks. The fertility rite marks the start of our festivities. The principle of life is beautiful, intimate, essential. It must not be stopped. <sighs> Yet it appears that someone did stop it. What about the naked woman? Can you tell me anything about her? Oh, yes, Matista. She's one of Fabio's compatriots and a performer, too. I haven't seen her today, actually. The police remain unaware of this tragic event? Some of them may be hiding behind their masks. They conceal many things. But we didn't want the authorities to create more problems. Besides, after a few cocktails, their incompetence will have soared to new heights. How do you know I even want the case? I promised you relaxation. If there's one thing I know about you, Sherlock, it's that nothing soothes you more than a good mystery. You've got a lot to do, Sherlock. This elaborate box must be for the ritual dagger. The herbs here are salvia divinorum. They have a slight hallucinogenic effect to emphasize the ceremony. The ointment smells mouse-like. I presume it is an aphrodisiac prepared from a Spanish fly. This oil has a slight aroma of flowers and olive. This one looks like a twisted symbol of Venus drawn in a hurry. The sign reminds me of the astrological symbol for Mars. to the guests' robes, apart from the bloodstains. Handcrafted and luxurious cufflinks. There's also a note. For my Fabio, Manchos. The key is similar to the one that Vogel gave me. The capital F on the key fob might refer to Fabio. Would you recognize me in one of these? I suppose not. Props, decorations, and tools for a more detailed set. This is a different ritual. How 
How can anyone accept such behavior? A useful tool for a disguise arsenal. The pitcher is empty, but with puddles around it. Blood clots are adhered to the sides of the drain. Identical to the robes the guests are wearing. What about a quick pillow fight? Enough cigars to burn down the entire mansion. An open wound spoiled the carpet. Blood. A sturdy bottle met a not so sturdy human. It didn't break only because it was unopened. Why don't people tidy up after themselves? The wounded person was here for some time. A bloody handprint on an armchair. A person leaned against the doorframe. They left a smudged trail of blood. There appeared to be no further traces leading to the altar. So, Sherry, do you have any ideas about the case? Perhaps, perhaps. I think I can deduce what happened here. The bottle was used as a weapon during a scuffle in the smoking lounge. Then, to ensure no one would interrupt, the murderer locked the door. The unconscious body of the victim was moved to the altar room. Once the body was on the altar, the murderer thrust the dagger into the victim's heart. Symbols were drawn with the blood. The wardrobe was used to hide the bloodied robe from anyone's eyes. The killer washed himself and took a clean robe from the hangar before leaving. Are you all right? You're on the floor, not moving. I think I know what happened here.
I'm starting to put the pieces together. Fabio was stabbed. I see nothing gets past you, Werner. Yes, he was stabbed, but only after being knocked out in the next room and placed here. I do not yet know why. So who's responsible? Well, it was one person working alone, and the murderer has now donned a robe. He or she could be hiding in plain sight. We have lost time, Werner, but your discretion may prove to be a benediction after all. The murderer had to have access to this room. After the crime, he used his own key to lock the door. So, who had the key to the altar room? I'm not sure. As a special guest, I was provided one by Mr. Manchios. He should be able to tell you of any others. Where can I find him? Most likely in the main hall, entertaining his guests. He has a mask with golden stars. You can't miss him. But please be discreet. We don't want to risk disturbing the revelry. I know you can untangle this mess. <laughs> Kurt Manchios, I presume? I'm Sherlock Holmes. Oh, you must be the one Werner told me about. What a sweet voice you have. It must belong to a handsome young man. Can I call you Sherlock? As you wish, Mr. Manchios. Mr. Vogel asked me to help you. The body in the altar room requires answers, and quickly, I suspect the murderer to still be here. What? Lower your voice. I don't want anyone to hear us. Did you know Fabio well? People are starting to look at us, Sherlock. Change the subject. I can't believe what happened to him. To me. Such an atrocity. Think what it means for me. A wonderful evening for so many good, influential, and rich people has been ruined. I have betrayed all my promises of exotic delights. I don't understand. Surely a murder would affect your reputation to a greater extent. Please, isn't this why you are here? I thought you were a silent magician. Do your tricks and make it go away. I need to find all those who had the key to the altar room. As far as I know, Mr. Vogel, Fabio, and you had access to it. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Also, Matista and Santos. Santos? Who is that? Santos Pinchetti, my major domo, in his opinion at least. I'd like to speak to Mr. Pinchetti and Matista. Do you have somewhere I might have a private conversation with them? Of course, of course. Let me think. Matista is entertaining the guests somewhere, and Santos... Oh, yes. He will be busy with the servants. Or the cook. What's that noise? What's going on? Freeze, filth. You're under arrest. Look at you. Committed a crime, and now I have to free you, kiss your hand, and apologize for the inconvenience. I did tell you that Mr. Vogel and I were innocent. I emphasized it in my statement. Your statement? 
thanks to some bigwigs who work for the so-called good of the country by releasing fleas like you. Thank God we have Vogel in his letter. Once I get to that goldfish, I'll... Bigwig? Oh, my wretched brother Mycroft and his long nose. Wait, did you say Mycroft? Mycroft Holmes? Are you the youngest son of Violet Holmes, rest her soul? You knew my mother? Not personally, no. Not exactly. I was working on the paperwork for that case. Would you happen to remember anything of the events? Well, I didn't make the inquiry, but I remember seeing some notes. Why? Perhaps we can negotiate. I could be quite useful. Huh. Got you hooked, right? You know what? Stark and the others think they're the smartest here, thanks to you. Let me get this straight. Are you listening to me, lad? I'm all ears. Take this case. Report to me only, to Constable Harvey Oswald. I'll leave everything I have on this table. Find the murderer. Be a real copper. Question the suspects, make them sing, give me something substantial. And if Mr. Vogel is not a suspect? If he's innocent, then you can take your favourite degenerate away from here. If you slip or mess with the evidence, then trust me, your brother won't save you from my bludgeon. Meanwhile, I'll be checking the archive for you. If anybody asks, then you're a consulting detective. Let's make a start then, partner. I'm glad we managed to get the scoop before the raid. I can't go back to prison. Back on track to solve the case.